Hello everybody, welcome back to another NASCAR video today, and today we are doing the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series predictions for 2024, like I just said, if I haven't said it already, and we're going to use tier list of to decide who, which driver season is going to be like next year. So, first up you got Fantastic Season, sorry for the like the bad quality, and then you got good season, so red's fantastic season, orange is good season, in between orange and yellow is above average season, average season is yellow right here, below average season is light green, right here, meh season is um is dark green, Meo mediocre season is light blue, bad season is kind of dark blue and then per awful season is purple and here's your your drivers right here we're gonna start off with kyle bush and i think kyle bush will have easy a good season now i remember um back in 2022 and everyone says like oh kyle bush is washed he he's he's way past his prime and it may be true that he is past his prime because however kyle bush is almost 40 years old by the way i oh, mean i can't believe it's it's, it, I can't believe that I can't. But this year, he really like did really well in the first half of the season. He won like, he won like um. At least, yeah, he won like three races within like the first half of the season. He won Auto Club, which was the final race of that track before NASCAR foolishly decided to des destroy it, which I think is stupid for this. Wrote for this quote unquote short track that's gonna be absolute balls next year. Gonna be do the next gen being sucky at short tracks. He then won Talladega, and then won um Gateway in the in the free chi weed automobile, the cannabis car. So I expect Kyle Busch to have a good season once again. Maybe have the same amount of wins, maybe even more. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not 100 sure, but I know Kyle Busch. Still has what it takes to go for a championship. Him getting eliminated this year in the round of 12 is a fluke. So this year, next year, I'm pretty sure he'll redeem himself. Next up is Austin Dillon, Kyle Busch's teammate. And I'll probably put Austin here. It'll definitely be, or I'll probably put him right here instead. Austin Dillon, um, last year probably had his worst season of his whole entire career. However, see, he did get a top five. It was not as awful as 2019. Yeah, it was kind. Of, yeah, it was awful. Like, even though he had that one top top uh, five, it was just an awful season for Austin. But I expect him to maybe turn it around next year, um, and get at least another win or two. I don't know. Like it seems like every odd numbered year he seems to win races. Like ever since twenty eighteen. So don't count him out next year. He could win a race. He get back into the chase. I don't know. But for now, Austin Dillon will have a below average season. Tyler Reddick, um, right here. I'll probably put him in above average. I don't expect Tyler to do much more than from the, this past year. Probably will get at least another win, but that'll probably be it. He'll probably just have an average season, get limited in the round of 16, around a 12. Not, not not much there to discuss. I know this could age really well. This is a hot take, but I, I don't see Tyler Reddick getting far next year. Ross Chastain, I'll also have, I'll have in fantastic season. Ross Chastain, I believe, will come back next year stronger than ever. Last year was like a down year, just like with, and because, because, you know, in 2022, he made the final four. Um, and that's a fact he did by the Hale Melon, but this year he got limited in the round of 12, but I expect him to come back and I expect him to win at least three to five races next year. So keep it out for Ross Chastain, Austin Sendrick. I'll put him in mediocre season. Like he's easily the weakest of the free team Penske cars. Um, probably the best one currently at this time is Ryan Blaney. Second is Logano, Joey Logano and, Third's Austin Sendrick. His sophomore season was awful, but will he be worse than Austin Dillon? I don't know. Austin Dillon at least has like some, 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 you know, some recognize, recognition with this new car and has been in the sport for a long time. So Austin Sendrick, uh, we'll say he'll have a mediocre season, but I just hope he's, he doesn't fall into this 
this this category right here, which is the the bad season category. I'm tr trying to cut him some slack. Josh Berry, I can also see going into mediocre season. Like he's replacing Kevin Harvick at a declining Stuart Haas racing. I don't see, I don't see, um, I don't see um, Josh Berry doing better than Harvick was. So that's why I have him there. Plus, he didn't win a single race in arguably the best equipment all year long last year, which was Junior Motorsports. At least one of them should have won the championship, in my opinion. But it is what it is. Or, but John Nemechek should have won too. But instead, of went to somebody who was kind of irrelevant all season. But oh well, that's the format. That's that. And uh, Steve O'Donnell, and Steve Phelps, Steve Phelps says that it's not gimmicky. Hmm. Ironic. But anyways, getting back on topic. Josh Berry, I believe, will probably have a couple of top fives, a few top tens, and that'll probably be it. Kyle Larson, this is an easy one right here. I expect Larson to have like a great season. Um because this past year and the this past year he made it to the final four. And I expect him to do the same thing because he's a really talented race car driver. So easily fantastic season for Kyle Larson. Brad Kozlowski, I'll put in in a good season. Like ever, uh, he's been improving year by year, but I expect 2024 to finally be the year he breaks out, wins that exclusive first career win. So yeah, <laughs> I expect him to do that. I expect him to win a, way, a race. Corey LaJoy, I'll put an average season. I, I could have put him below average season or mass season, but I expect Corey LaJoy with like the recent, recent rise of Spire Motorsports to do really well for 2024. At least get more top tens and top fives. Like I don't know about top fives, but at least top ten. So that's why I have him in aver average season. He's been improving a little bit year by year since he joined Spire in 2021. Definitely has improved a lot since when he drove for like teams like Go Fast Racing, TriStar Motorsports, and BK Racing back back then. So I he found his he found his new home. He found his current home, and I think I even heard that he he got offers from other teams, top tier teams, but he's opted to stick with Spire. So I respect him for that. And the fact that he's over Austin Dillon's beyond crazy. Chase Elliott, I expect him to have a good season. Like, I don't know about fantastic, but I know he'll have a good season, a good comeback season. Because last year, this year, 2023, was just absolutely atrocious, to say the least. It was just awful. Not a good season whatsoever. And just a season that many Chase Elliott fans like myself want to want to forget ever happened. But... At least some of my other drivers, mm, 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 Ricky Stiles Jr. did really well this year in substitution. So that's good to know. I expect Chase Elliott to win at least two races or three races. I don't know. But at least expect him to at least win once for 2024. That's the goal. Um, Noah Gregson, I put in mediocre. and I, I, could, I could do a toss-up between uh, both these, but I'm going to put him in mediocre. Uh, SHR is better equipment than Legacy Motor Club, so... I don't expect Gregson to flop so hard. Like, I'm pretty sure he'll at least get a top five and a couple top tens because, hell, Stuart Haas Racing is an actual, was an actual legit top tier team. So I expect Gregson to perform a lot better than he did at Legacy Motor Club. I can just tell you that. I don't expect him to win a race, but I just, we'll just leave it at that. Um, Denny Hamlin, I'll put him in good season. Uh, just it's, Denny Hamlin is, a, is an enigma, pretty much. Um, he has, Great seasons. He has good seasons, but he just cannot close the deal and win the championship. Regardless if he was the best driver all season or not. So that's kind of disappointing. So that's why I'm I know he's gonna have another good season. That's why I put him in good season. So yeah. Ryan Blaney, I probably put in above average. And here's hear me out. Um Ryan Blaney I won the championship, but if you look at the statistics from since 2019, Kyle Busch in 2020, Chase Elliott in 2021, Kyle Larson in 2022, and Joey Logano in 2023, all of them did not live that high up to their expectations, expectations, and they all got eliminated early in the chase except for Chase Elliott in 2021, even though he had half the wins he didn't have in 2020 compared to what he had in 2021, only had two, and in 2020 he had five. So that's that's why I expect Blaney to have. I expect him to have an, uh, a championship hangover season and continue the trend five years since since Kyle Busch won his second championship. But that's just me. This is a hot take, I know. But I can see him maybe winning one or two races, but that's about it. 
Uh, Chase Briscoe, I'll put and I'll put an average. I know SHR is you know is struggling so much, and in, in, in the recent memory, but Chase Briscoe is probably the best driver they have currently right now. He was like the second best to Kevin Harvick. Do I see him? Can I see him winning a race? I don't know. Probably not. But he's probably the best legit driver at a chance to to win an actual race. To be quite honest with you. Uh, I can see him getting some top fives and top tens, and I can see him leading Stuart Haas Racing and being like the only consistent guy now. I don't know how if this will if this will age well, but I just want to leave it at that. Kaz Grala, um, I don't, this has not been confirmed, but I don't see Kaz Grala having a good season. I'm sorry, I love Kaz Grala. He's a great guy. He liked one of my tweets, but I'm not saying he's a bad driver. No, not at all. But compared to his teammate. Supposed teammate Justin Haley, who's a, who's been official to have a Rick Ware racing car to drive for them. I don't see Kaz Grala performing the same way as Justin Haley. Like Kaz Grala is like a strange starter. Remember those those videos? Like like this guy would would bounce around in between trucks and Xfinity, then would like go to Cup, then head back to trucks, then head back to Xfinity, then go to Cup some more, then head back to trucks, and then do some Xfinity, then go back to trucks. And and now he's probably going to go back to Cup. And not to mention, not saying he's a bad driver because I got some valid facts to show that he's not a bad driver. In his first start in the 2020 Daytona Road Course, he literally led laps and finished inside the top 10 when he subbed in for Austin Dillon, who had COVID-19. And he also got a top five at the Spring Talladega 2021 race and even got the money team in the Daytona 500 in 2022 and got them a, a top 25 finish in the 2022 Coke 600, but I just don't see him doing that much with Rick Ware Racing. I'm sorry, I but I don't see him having an awful season. I don't. I can see him having, you know, some top 20 runs going occasionally, maybe even a top 15, and if he's lucky enough, a top 10, but I think the 51 car will be probably the probably be the all-star car or something. I don't know. We'll get to Justin Haley in a minute, but going to AJ Allmendinger or the 16 car, which looks like to be shared by different kinds of drivers. And and depending on who it is, if they get like Ty Dillon or something, I'll probably put them in meh. Like not calling AJ Allmendinger in meh. Like he belongs definitely in like like here or somewhere around here. But but if they have like drivers like Ty Dillon driving for driving for him, then yeah, like that's that's an easy like mess season if my opinion. Not much to say there. I bet you Allmendinger will be a contender on the road course as you'd know it. Chris Buescher. I'll put him in great season. I can see him having a fantastic season. I can see him having a great season next year. I expect him to win a lot of races. But at the same time, my I'm kind of second guessing this choice cuz next year last this year could have been a fluke and next year when he comes back he could have just been irrelevant all season, but I have confident Chris Busher even hell he even made it to to the final 8 this year, the, the round of 8. Uh, so I expect him to win at least three races, three to five races, maybe four. Probably four is the more likely option, but you never know. He could pull out and win like seven races next year. Who knows? Next up is Martin Truex Jr. I can see definitely see Truex having a fantastic season for the second year in a row. I think Truex's prime is back. Like sure, last this season hasn't ended the way he wanted to, but he won the regular season championship. He Dominated the like the first half of the season into the second half a little bit, and um, I can see him continue carrying that momentum into next year. So that's why I got Truex in fantastic season. I can see him winning at least two races at best, uh, but maybe three, maybe four, maybe even five. I don't know. He could do pull a, a Kyle Larson win like ten races. You never know. Christopher Bell. Uh, I'll probably put above average. I don't, Christopher Bell, the problem is Christopher Bell is like inconsistent. Like this past year, uh, um, he hasn't had a single top 10 in, since the Bristol dirt or hasn't had a top five at that until, until late in the season with like less than 10 races to go. And he somehow got in the final four. Don't know how he, because he won that, that, homestead race that's the only because he won that race that's me mean, that means he deserves to be in the final four over Trex. really i don't i don't think so i'm sorry or denny hamlin like i don't see bell doing that much for 2024 maybe get another win two wins but that's about it 
I'd be shocked if he didn't win a race. Harrison Burton, automatic, awful season. Just the guy just sucks. I don't need I don't want to be rude because I actually do like like him a little bit. Like his he should still be in Xfinity driving for Team Penske, not in the Cup series wasting his time away. And it, and the Wood Brothers thought he would be would he would be a great replacement for Matt DiBenedetto. Like this is the same equipment that with Matt DiBenedetto, Paul Menard, and Ryan Blaney actually competed for wins, consistent good finishes, and even made the chase a couple times. And now look where they are not at now. Like the Wood Brothers is technically, you know, a, a fourth Penske car. Basically how the Jasper Motorsports 77 like Kodak car was with Brandon Gaughan and Travis Qualfall from 2004 and 2005. Hell, even with Dave Blaney and Robert Presley and from like 2000 to 2003. So I don't see Harrison Burton doing much different in, in two full-time seasons from 2022 to 2023. He's only had one top five and four top tens. That's it. I can don't I don't see him doing anything else after that. So he needs to go back down to Xfinity. So I expect you'll have an awful, an awful season. Hate to say that to Harrison Burton fans, but I just don't see him doing well. Logano. Probably will we'll return to a good season, even though I don't like him. This past year was was probably his worst year since 2017. Although he did make the chase to that win Atlanta, but regardless, I see can I can see Logano like returning to a good season, winning at least one or two races. So yeah, Bubba Wallace or Daryl Wallace Jr. probably will have an above average season. This past year was probably his career year. Made the chase. And but made it to the round of twelve, but didn't win a single race. But I could still see him fitting around that range. So yeah, not enough to be an average. If if he didn't if he didn't make the chase last year, he'd probably be down here. But I just I'm just gonna put him here. Uh, William Byron easily easily for Byron a fantastic season. Like Byron should def should have been the champion this year. I don't care what people say. Like sure Ryan Blaney came at the right place at the right time, but. Come on. Byron had led the best statistics all season long. He had the most wins. He had the best average finish. He he did really well this season. And he didn't didn't walk out a champion. Are you kidding me? Like that's what I mean by this format is complete utter dog shit, in my opinion. It shouldn't he should not be third in points. He should be the champion. Like that's so f- stupid. That's so fucking dumb that he didn't win the championship. Anyways, rant aside, I expect Byron to have another good season, win at least six or seven races. I'd be shocked if he didn't win any or just won a very few, but Byron should be the champion. I, I don't care what people say. He should have gotten it. And I feel like the people that, that say that, Oh, Byron didn't deserve it. Um, and probably Hendrick haters, Byron haters, like no offense to Blaney, but like Blaney was like the worst. He was like the second to worst, like or third to worst. I don't know. He's like back there with Ricky Stanos Jr. and Michael McDowell for like bad average finishes. Like he was like a whole seven and a half positions worse than Byron. And yet he gets crowned the champion. Are you serious? And like I said, Steve O'Donnell and Steve Phelps like want to want to say that this isn't a gimmicky format. Well, that that's complete bullshit in my opinion. But anyways, once again, Rand aside, Byron will have a fantastic season. Let's move on. Daniel Hamrick, yeah, bad season. I I don't even want to. I don't even think he'll get a mediocre season because I remember that one season with Richard Childress racing, and boy oh boy, that was just horrible. He 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 was. The person that brought back the eight car for the first time since like 2007 or 2008. The the car, the number has not been used since then. He only had one top five and two top tens. I don't expect him getting that much different or getting that much better. And I don't see what colleague sees in him. They should, they should have put someone else in there that was more deserving. Like to be fair, they could have put, yeah, they should, I don't know. Just the only reason why. I, Daniel Hamrick got that ride because Justin Haley went to Rick Ware Racing. That's the only that's the honest truth. Hamrick has done nothing in Xfinity since his quote unquote championship win. Like no hate to Hamrick, but I don't see him doing anything. He's probably just gonna suck and just run twenty fifth every weekend. But who am I to say anything? But okay, uh, that's just that's that's just my opinion. Don't take it for granted. Michael McDowell, I can see him having an average season. Um, may he won the Indy Road Course like. I've like I did not expect him to just completely just destroy the field that whole race and 
Look at that. When you have no fucking stupid stage cautions, you can actually get some decent racing. And that race was pretty good. It felt like an old school NASCAR Cup Series race from like 2016. It felt like it again. But NASCAR just loves the stupid stage cautions and they had to return to it at the Charlotte Roval because they just want to just attract the wrong fans. And those fans are the reasons why NASCAR is probably going down the shitter. But anyways, Michael McDowell, probably, I I would love to see him win again. I'm pretty sure he, he may do it again. I don't know. But I know he probably will make the chase again on pure speed like he did this year. Uh, like, he literally was in the chase on pure speed. That's how good McDowell was this season compared to last year. Sure, he didn't have the same amount of top 10s and top 5s. Well, top 5s he did, but not an amount of top, not as much top 10s. But still, like, he did a great job this past season. Won the Indy Road Course and nearly, he, he got, like, did he get a top 5 or top 10 at Bristol? I don't know. But he did pretty well this season. I can tell you that. I can see him having an average season. Todd Gillen, I'll put uh, below average. Todd still has a lot of work to do. Um, this is his third season now. And to be granted, unlike uh, Harrison Burton, this past season, Todd got kicked out of the car and spent races in Rick Ware racing equipment. And like, and even in the 36 car, I don't know what Rick, I don't know what Front Row Motorsports was doing. They, they made a stupid decision, like getting rid of him that, uh, and not letting him run for like the chase or anything. But my point is, like, a full-time in the car. But he's now back. I expect him to perform like he did last year, but better. That's why I have him below average. Like, do I expect him to be up there with Michael McDowell? Probably not. But I can still see him being somewhat consistent. Like, on the same rank as Austin Dillon. Let's just be let's just be honest. Ryan Priest, I'll just put him in meh. Like, I think he will definitely improve this year from last year. That's why he's not in mediocre season. Like, the reason why he's above like um, Josh Berry and Noah Gregson and Austin Sendricks because he has like more cup experience in those three. That's why. That's why I have him meh in mess season. John Nemechek, um, it's a mix up. I I don't know if he'll be in either mediocre or bad season. I probably will. That forty two car has been complete dog shit. That hasn't that number has not gotten a single top ten since since um the Bristol Dirt two thousand twenty two with Ty Dillon. So. I did say a lot about the car, so I'll probably put him in bad season. No offense to John Henry Machek fans or himself, the driver, but I don't see John Henry Machek, like doing any any different. He may get like one or two top tens. I definitely think he will. Def that team will definitely improve, but I don't see them doing that much different. Just like with Eric Jones, uh, probably will put him in below average season. Definitely will improve from last year. This year, definitely for sure, but. I don't see him doing that much different. May get some more top fives some top tens, but still a long way to go. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Definitely will put him in average season. Like Stenhouse really did really good last year, this past year. Um, he, he gave JTG Doherty their racing their best career season since like 2014. And, and he doubled the top tens that Almendinger got them back then too. Like he... He was consistently getting top 15s too. And like, if I go on racing reference, like he went only like, he only finished outside the top, excuse me, top 20. Um, Only, only like um nine or eight, seven to nine times. So that's really impressive. He's only had, and he's only had only three, and he's only had three DNFs. So that Daytona 500 win was not a fluke. He almost went into the round as 12, but just couldn't do it enough. But just, Cinderella story for Ricky Stiles Jr. I expect him to be a 50-50 next year alongside these guys. And I and will he win again? Probably. Keep an eye on him for Talladega. Or those super speed races. I'm pretty sure I'm confident he can do win again. Alex Bowman. I will put in above average. I do think Bowman will come back and win a race. But those injuries and that he sustained. The concussion in the fall Texas race 2022. And that, that, that uh, Dirk rally crash that he had outside of NASCAR in 2023 that really hindered his performance. And I don't see him like doing much better, but I can definitely see him returning to victory lane. Now I can guarantee you that. So that's why I have him above average. Now here's Justin Haley. This is an interesting case who, where should I put Justin Haley, which is a really good question. This is a really good question. Um, 
Like, Rick Ware Racing is really heading the right direction. And I think on the super speedways, Justin Haley could legit be a threat. So I think Justin Haley will be here. Just keep this in mind. Like, I know that's a little too high for a Rick Ware car below average season, but keep this in mind. Rick Ware Racing has made significant improvements since ditching Cody Ware. Like, they got Ryan Newman. They got, as you know, the it seems like the, the talent needs to be charged a little bit. So... Apologize about the screen going a little dark, but but literally JJ Yaley of all people gave this team their best season ever. They got he got them two top twenty finishes, one top fifteen finish in the top ten. One of the top fifteens he got was in that fifty one car. So keep an eye out for for um Justin Haley next year. I expect him to be below average, not more than that. That's I think that's pushing it. If I go into average season, but other than that, I think it should be decent. Ty Gibbs, um, I think will I think he'll I'll put him in good season. I guess I think he'll shine next year, win a race or two. So I can see Ty Dill, not Ty Dillon, Ty Gibbs, um, doing all right. That's why I have him in good season. So yeah, and now we go to Carson Hosevar, which is another interesting story. I probably put him in below average as well, right here. I could definitely see um. Uh, him having the same results as Justin Haley. Like, no offense, Spire or Rick Ware. They're just not the best type of cars on the track. But I expect, um, I expect, you know, um, Carson Hosevar to be good at the short tracks. Keep an, eye on, keep an eye out for him on the smaller tracks like Gateway. Like, remember that performance in the same equipment? He made it in the top 20, top 15. So keep an eye out for him. Bristol, like, uh, as well with, like, Martinsville, like keep an eye out for him. BJ McLeod, I hate to say this, but it's bad season. Like Live Fast Motorsports has not improved alongside um Spire and Rick Ware. Like unfortunately they have not, like, and they've sold their charter. They're now running part-time and and Matt Tift, one of the the, the, the biggest helpers of the team, also left the team as well. And and now there's uh, there's reports that they're, one of their cars got lended to go fast racing in the Cup Series. I don't know if that's official or not. It could be just for their late model program. But on the on the on the um, on the render, why did it say NASCAR Cup Series then with the with the Camaro? Like on the late model was a Corvette. I I just don't understand. I don't get it. But I don't see BJ McLeod doing much. I'm sorry to all the BJ McLeod fans. Probably be a bad season if he's lucky. He can maybe get a top twenty. But that equipment is just awful. I'm just going to be honest. It's just not really that good. I'm sorry. But I'm not calling BJ McLeod a bad driver. He's a decent driver. But the equipment is complete ass. I'm sorry. Um, Jimmy Johnson. This is this is going to hurt. This is going to suck. I'm going to put him in either. Which, which season? Uh, mediocre. I'm sorry, Jimmy Johnson fans. Um, but, but, you know, Jimmy Johnson just... This past year has been atrocious. He was supposed to make five starts this year. He made the Daytona 500, wrecked out of that race, wrecked out of lap one of Coda, and just had a bad Charlotte race. And one race he he withdrawed from, and the other he didn't. Like one of them, I can understand. The one he withdrawed from, I could, I completely understand why. It was due to personal family events. Uh just you know what? Um, I, I think I'll move him up to next season. I don't, I don't want to be like too harsh on Jimmy Johnson. I think he'll prove a little bit. But but with that being said, I still see him not doing that much, unfortunately, for the seven-time champ. I think he's w- way past his prime. And if he's lucky to get a top 10, like, that's a huge accomplishment. I mean, like, J.J. Yaley got more top 10s than Jimmy Johnson last year. I still have that sink in. But anyways... Not to mention, going back to Rick Ware Racing, J.J. Ailey, literally in the late part of the Atlanta race before the rain came, he literally was competing for the win in the top five and the top ten and got a top ten from it. So t- I'm telling you, J.J. has talent. I don't know why he isn't full-time in the car for Kaz Gorilla. Like, come on, Rick Ware Racing. J.J. Ailey literally gave you your best your best season yet, yet you kick him to the curb. Like, unless if they're bringing back one of their, the, their other cars, either the 53 or 52 car. kind of doubt it. Maybe... Maybe maybe so, maybe not. I don't know, but I see Jimmy Johnson have a mess season. Now we go over to Shane Van Gisenbergen. Unless if this is assuming that he's gonna be the only driver in the Project 91 car. There's like been talks like like someone else like Helio Castroneves or hell even Kimio Rackin could come back. 
So where should I where should I rank rank uh Shane Van Gisenberg and like realistically like I should put him like I should put him either here or here, but I probably put him in here to be quite honest. Like that win at Chicago was great. Like I keep an eye out for him on the road courses, but like the the super speedways and the other tracks, those are the tests that he needs to face. And if there's like another driver who has barely any the stock car experience, I can expect the Project 91 car being in that same category as well. So yeah, Daniel Suarez right here. I definitely can see him having an average season. I don't know if he will win again, but he he needs to be consistent. Like I think he'll may I think he'll make the playoffs or not the playoffs. This is an NFL. Uh, I think he'll make the chase again. I don't know if he'll win a race though, but but Daniel Suarez, I know he's a good driver. I know he's a decent driver. He's just it's just one of those things where like cup's not for everybody, but at least he has a win. At least you could say that. So I'll put him in average season. And for Zane, the last one is Zane Smith, the Dave Marcus number seventy one. Where will Dave? Will, will not Dave? Like the Dave Marcus and um Bobby Isaac number. Where will um Zane Smith run? Or have I'll probably put him right here. Mess season. I don't know if he'll do better than than Carson Hosevar. I kind of skeptical. Like, sure, it's a track house aligned car, but still a spire car at the same time. I can see him having a mess season and just leave it at that. So maybe he'll get lucky. Maybe get a few good finishes every now and then, but it's still spire equipment. But I don't know. Mark, Mark Michael Adretti literally put eighty million dollars into the team with like sponsorship from Gainbridge, so anything's possible at this point. But not on this list. It's a is the is the stage sixty Roush car with David Reagan and what looks like to be Cam Waters. Where will I put them? I'll probably put them as what? Okay, I don't know what just happened there. I'll probably put them in. I probably will put them right here. To be quite honest, there or right here. And the other cars, there's the 67 2311 car. I probably will put them like here. Uh, the 13 colleague car, probably put right here. I don't know. Probably put them there. Uh, any other cars? The money team, the money team, of course. Um, like the driver, don't know who they where they will probably be. Probably right, right here, because the money team's not like, like actual competitive equipment. Um, also NY racing, if they, if they were, if they were, um, on in here, they'd probably be here as well. And go fast racing is another interesting case. Like where will go fast racing go or be probably here. In my opinion, sorry, go fast racing. If you do come back for a cup race and beard Motorsports, I can see them. I can see them being here. And any other cars am I missing? The, oh yeah, the 36 front row car. Probably be here because on the super speedways, they that car is shined with Riley Herbst and even Todd Gillen at times. Um, assuming if another Rick Ware car comes, probably be right here or or right here. I don't not sure. Um, who else am I missing from the equation? MBM cars, if they ever return, probably go right here. I'm sorry. I uh, just, I like NBM Motorsports, but they don't have the equipment just like with Live Fast Motorsports, the Money Team, and Beard Motorsports, and NY Racing, assuming if NY Racing does come back. Gunt Brothers Racing, if they ever do return, probably be here because they're just back marker equipment. I hate to say that. Love to see them return. They have a late model program. They probably will. There's still a chance because their racing shop's still open, but who knows? Um, am I missing anybody as I'm trying to go through? All the all the numbers. I know team heads. I know team Hesberg shut down, unfortunately. Um, who else? If I'm missing anybody, I'm trying to think here. Free F Racing. If they do return, there's another team. Probably be right here, too, as well. Like I don't see them performing with expectations. Like hell, they could get Ryan Vargas to do a cup start. That'd be cool. Um, who else? Who else? Who am I? Who else am I trying to think of? Oh yeah, the thirty three RCR car. Probably will put right here, depending on who the driver is. If not, did probably be down here. Um, 
Junior Motorsports to 88 car. Doubt that will ever happen, but what if? They'll probably be right here. And Justin Algar will be their driver. I am pretty confident. Because who else would be open? Josh Berry literally went to went to Stuart Haas as well with Noah Gregson. So anything's possible, though. And, and it, it all depends on the driver and team. That's what I'm counting it by. And I'm trying to think of... Maybe another driver that could literally come to cup to the cup series. Um, um, yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's all the cars that are the numbers that I think if they were to, you know, make a start in NASCAR or one or two starts, that's what I think they would be. So let me know down below in the comments. Do you think this is a fair tier list? Like, I think it's fair. I could see this being completely, you know, realistic. So, yeah. This is a different kind of video, I know. But anyways, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe, turn on notification bell. Comment down below what you think about this. Do you agree with my tier list? Do you not? Comment down below what you would change if you made it this far in the video. So, yeah. 36 minutes in. About, I think it's about time we end off this video. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Peace out, y'all. Bye.